When printing fiber-reinforced engineering filaments, there are a few things to consider. This is particularly important if you are using a basic printer like mine, the Bambulab A1. Some safety rules must be followed to protect your health. Post-treatment is necessary, or at least advisable, for some high-tech filaments. I need high-pressure resistance 3D printed parts for my Stirling engine. After running intensive tests with conventional filaments, I now want to try out fiber-reinforced engineering materials. Carbon fiber-reinforced filaments promise high-strength components with highest layer adhesion. Since I have been using extruder filaments for a long time and have had good experiences with them, I asked for test samples for my experiments and was provided with three rolls of carbon fiber reinforced filament. Nylon is considered a difficult filament to print with, but at least in the DuraPro PA12CF variant tested here, I cannot confirm this. The most important thing is to print nylon only when it is really dry. I store and print my filaments in self-made boxes containing desiccant to keep them dry and always ready for use. A closed housing produces better results and prevents excessive warping. I made a housing out of wood and perspex panels, but a simple cardboard box with a foil window would work just as well for preventing draughts and keeping the heat inside the printing space. With a PEI printing plate and glue stick, the print bed adhesion is very good for me. I use the print values directly from the manufacturer with only a little over extrusion. This reduces the visual appearance but increases the strength and tightness. I am very happy with the results straight away. If a very good appearance is important, you can get much more beautiful print results with fine tuning. Vapors from melted nylon are unhealthy. They are probably not as bad as ABS or ASA, but I recommend an air filter in the printing space and good ventilation in any case. I took a close look at the filament, the printed parts and crack edges under the microscope. No exposed fibers can be seen on the filament and parts. Fibers only protrude at the crack edges. When a leather strip is rubbed intensively over the filament and printed part, no fibers get stuck to it but carbon fibers stick into the leather from the tear edge. You should therefore take care when working with PA12CF parts, avoid inhaling grinding dust, pay attention to cleanliness and wear gloves. Parts that are often touched should be sealed so that the fibers are encapsulated and can no longer cause damage. I dip the parts in Dictool because I need gas tight components and the internal areas are easily accessible. Nylon is highly hygroscopic and therefore loses its strength in the long term, so sealing also helps to prevent this. Nylon is a crystalline polymer and annealing ensures that the part achieves a high level of crystallinity which improves its thermal and mechanical properties. With these steps I was able to achieve very good results straight away and also printed some test samples which I will now test for compression strength. I will show in one of the next videos if they can withstand higher pressures than the usual filaments. As always, I am very happy to get suggestions, criticism and commands here on YouTube or Discord. Many thanks for watching.